What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to our Pokemon Heart Gold walkthrough. Last time we defeated Chuck, the 6th gym leader for us at least, technically the 5th gym leader back in Seanwood City. And today it's time to finally deliver the secret potion. We got it two episodes ago and we've kind of just left this Ampharos hanging. So, we've already been through the lighthouse before, fought all the trainers, meaning now we can head straight up the elevator and deliver the secret potion to Amphi, the Ampharos, so that this lighthouse will light up and boats will stop wrecking the dock here in Olivine City because, yeah, that's been such a huge problem. And you can see it's still dark in here, but all we need to do is talk to Jasmine and she's going to be like, oh, I hope you don't mind, but Ampharos only takes stuff from me. Um, yeah, I don't know why this Ampharos is picky or something like that. But there we go, he's lining up the lighthouse again, and we have saved the day. So, what this will do is send Jasmine back to the Olivine City Gym, since she doesn't have to take care of the Ampharos anymore. Also, I love how she gets back to the gym before we can, because uh, she takes the long way down through the ladders and stuff. Actually, I don't even know how she does that, because in order to get, um, you know, up... From that ladder to the floor we were just on, you had to like jump out the window from like two stories up. So who knows? Jasmine is like a daredevil or something. Anyways, we take the quick way down. But as we're heading on outside, Balboa is going to call us. Or I don't even know how you say this guy's name. I I've always gone with Balboa, but that's not really how it's spelled. Anyways, Balboa says that the Safari Zone is now open. If you remember, this is the guy we saw right at um, the entrance to Route 39. And now that the Safari Zone is open, that means we can head through Route 47 and Route 48. So that's what we're gonna do in today's episode. Even though it might seem like a little more inconvenient since Jasmine is right there, I'm going to do this instead just because I wanna take a little break in between the two gyms. And you know, that's still only gonna be like a one episode break to be fair. But yeah, let's quickly make our way back to Seanwood City. You can see that I have finally put Granbull up to the front of the party. He doesn't really need the EXP share anymore. So yeah, I'm feeling good about having him in the front. And I'm just hugging the uh, the rocks here. That is the quickest way to get back to Seanwood City since I do not have a Pokemon with Fly. So the first thing you're going to need to do is head through the Cliff Edge Gate. You're going to see that the workers are gone. They were blocking the way earlier. And there's not much to do in here besides talk to this lady. Oh, wait. I don't even know what she's asking about. I'm going to say no. But, um, you know, I will I will wish you a great rest of your day. We don't have Rock Climb yet, so we can't check out that little section. So, he, we are on Route 47 now. By the way, one of the best music themes in the entire game. And really out of, like, any of the Pokemon games, in my opinion... Just going to let it play there for a second. I mean, it is it is a beautiful piece. And this is also a beautiful route. You're like, you know, on this big cliff overlooking the water. It's really sick. And Route 47 has a couple of trainers in it. Now, there's actually no, like, wild grass here, I don't think. You can just find, like, Pokemon by surfing. I think you can actually find Seal and Staryu by surfing. So, that's kind of cool. But for now, we are going to get on with the trainers. And you would think that the trainers would, you know, jump in levels since we're finally at a point where um, you had to beat a gym in order to access this place. But no, still like a level 19 dump sparse, who, by the way, has one of the most disappointing evolutions. I hated what they did with the dump sparse in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but whatever. We got to live with it. And Rubble gets to level 30. And yeah, we're just going to keep you out because everyone else is past the level 30. And he's got more Dunsparces. So Route 47 has a couple of trainers. Then we'll actually stop by the Cliff Cave as well, which basically just connects Route 47 to Route 48. And Route 48 actually has no trainers. It just has some graphs, and that's about it. So it's going to be a pretty short video. And then tomorrow's episode will be extra, extra short because literally all I'm going to do is battle Jasmine because I don't want to, like, start the whole Team Rocket, you know, um, storyline in Goldenrod City just yet. I'll split that up into like its own three videos. So yeah, we're just going to be battling Jasmine since she has no gym trainers or anything like that. I'm sure you guys know 
um, about that in these games. And this dude is currently guarding this item. We need to uh, defeat him so we can grab it. I think it's a revive. Also, you're going to see there's some places where you can surf, but I don't think I am even going to bother surfing because the only item you can get right now is like a hidden pearl, which just isn't worth it to go out of my way and look for. But it is important to remember this place because once you have surf and waterfall and you're very far into the post game, I'm talking like defeated red and everything, you can come back here and get yourself a legendary Pokemon. So we'll be doing that in like one of the final episodes of this series but um yeah just keep this spot in mind um don't completely forget about these routes they are kind of forgettable honestly if it wasn't for like the theme of route 47 and route 48 you know just how good the music is i feel like most people would forget about them but this soundtrack is just a freaking banger man i gotta say and wow meryl is paralyzing me and just or well i guess skip bloom paralyzed me but we are getting uh, worn down here in this battle, but Rubble gets to level 31, and you are now in the triple triple digits for HP, which is kind of cool. And now that we're done with that battle, we'll go ahead and throw Jump Pluff to the front of the party, and let's go ahead and grab the revive that is just below you, and then we will head on inside the Cliff Cave, which again, really isn't a cave. Don't get scared by the name of it or anything. And I will spray Max Repel because surprisingly, there's like a wide variety of Pokemon that you can find in this very tiny cave. I mean, this is it. This guy will tell you that like one may lead you to a dead end and uh, the other will lead you the right way. If you want to progress quickly, go up. For now, I'm going to head down just to show where you can surf. You can head out of this exit. And um, again, I'm pretty sure as of now, if you surf, you can only find a hidden pearl. You'll need Waterfall to access a few more things. I could be wrong, though. Don't quote me on that. As I was saying, though, the Cliff Cave just randomly has a ton of Pokemon in it, like Golbat, Onix, Kingler, Quagsire, Misdreavus is a new one, Graveler, Machoke, and Steelix. So, yeah, a ton of really solid options. A lot of Pokemon are just evolved ones from earlier, but, I mean, even Misdreavus is pretty cool that you can find um, in that cave. For now, we will take on this uh, Ace Trainer duo. I think these are the first Ace Trainers we're taking on. So, yeah, now that we're getting into the later portions of the game, we're going to see some of these Ace Trainers. And they are usually sort of tough. And this is not a good matchup for Jump Pluff here. I think I'm going to switch. And unfortunately, I got to go to Gatorade. I know he's like the highest level Mon on my team. But, I mean, he's the best I've got for a Magmar. He's still weak to Electabuzz, by the way. Espeon can stay in, though. Can't wait till we get to level 36 when we finally get a stab attack. That is going to be nice. Then again, it's only Psybeam, which isn't the strongest psychic type move. What I need to do is go back to the Goldenrod department store. I don't think they sell the TM for Psychic, but if they do, that'd be amazing. And Magmar actually went for Faint Attack. I was not expecting that. Okay, that does a decent chunk. Now, I'm not going to go for Surf, so I guess I'm going for Crunch and then Shadow Ball, even though, oh, you went for Protect, that's fine. Also, we saw Synchronize go into action on that last turn, which is pretty cool. What is not cool is me getting fully paralyzed, and now both of my mods are paralyzed. Yo, this battle should not be this tough. Come on, we are like almost 10 levels above these guys. Let's, uh, let's get our heads in the game. No, Espeon's probably going to get like crit and die right here let's see oh no you lived all right shadow ball will kill the electabuzz then but yeah synchronize is just an awesome ability to have because you know if you get paralyzed you could be thinking oh now i'm gonna get outsped but then the opponent gets paralyzed right back and boom and gatorade uh yo you wanna you wanna attack someday um for now i think i'm gonna switch out to i guess granbull we have somewhat of a weakness to fire types with Ariados and Jump Pluff. And then when a fire type knows a dark type move also, I can't really use Espeon. So luckily we've got Gatorade over here who can take him out. Still don't want to go for Surf though just because that's going to hit my own team. We can't be friendly firing out here. Come on now. And we're going to get outsped again. Oh my gosh, he's going to go for Protect. Stop delaying the inevitable, dude. I mean, Ace Trainers, am I right? 
these guys think they're the best in town, and then when they finally start to lose a battle, they, like, won't accept defeat. So, here goes a flamethrower. That's gonna do a solid chunk, but down goes Magmar, finally. Also, I think there was a hidden Ultra Ball that I missed in the Cliff Cave, so you can pick that up if you want. I think it's, like, in the wall or something like that. And I believe we only have one more trainer to go on this route, or are we done? I can't remember. No, I feel like there's one more. Also, right there, I'm pretty sure is a lagging tail, but as you can tell, you can't get it until you get Waterfall. And, oh, wait, hold on, never mind, you can get it. <laughs> Ignore what I was saying, it looked like, it looked like you would just hop off the water and onto the land here, but I guess you can't. Um, and I didn't see there was a bridge right there. Okay, yeah, just, uh... Completely ignore what I said, and here we go, another double battle. I actually did not realize this was a double battle. Great, I still have Espeon out front. Hey, maybe they just have some, like, poison types or something. No, no, those are not poison types. Okay, um, well, let's see what we can do. We can Mega Drain the Onyx, get it out of here, and then, I guess, go to Ariados. You're the only one that's, like, not paralyzed. <laughs> My team is just beaten up, but again, this is the last trainer battle here and as i said before route 48 really has nothing going for it it is a pretty good area to grind i think this is like the best area to grind on wild pokemon again the cliff cave has a lot of fully evolved mods that will give out some good xp you also have like tauros coming up which can hand out some decent experience Ooh, jump bluff you might die in a single hit okay no you took it i'm actually a little surprised We'll go for Mega Drain and Sludge Bomb. Maybe that will be enough to take out this Cloyster. Also, coming up on Route 48, you can find Diglett just very randomly. I always associate Diglett with, like, the Diglett's Cave, but you can find Diglett in places other than that. So, yeah, if you want to get a Ground-type on your squad, then you can do that. It would actually come in handy for the Steel-type gym, so could be a pretty solid choice. And let's bike on ahead, and I think this is the photography dude, so I'm not really going to mess with him. Over here is a nugget that you can grab, and that's it for Route 48, because just ahead of us... Oh, I'm really going to have to spray one more Max Repel, that's annoying. Okay, whatever. But yeah, right here up ahead is the Safari Zone Gate, and it kind of has this cool archway. And there's a Pokemon Center here, so I'm going to heal up. Now, there's also these, like, stands and stuff where I think you can just buy random items, but you can't really get any items. I think there's some hidden tiny mushrooms lying around the area, but that's about it. For the Safari Zone itself, I mean, you know, it's your typical Safari Zone. There's different zones and areas, and depending on the area, you can find different Pokemon. And I think this is the game where if you uh, if you head inside, I think there's a guy that will give you different challenges. Or am I thinking, yes, it is. Okay, so yeah, this guy right here, he's going to give you like different challenges to do in the Safari Zone. And I guess he calls it the Owner Aptitude Test. And I think you'll like um, give him your phone number. He'll call you when he has a new challenge ready for you. I don't really know what the challenges are. Maybe it's like catch a certain Pokemon. I'm still going to say no. And... Oh, great. Okay, I think you have to say yes. All right, well, no, you don't have to explain. Okay, yeah, so for example, like the first one is to catch a Geodude, and then I think you can get free rewards for doing all that. I'm not going to do that, though. I don't really plan on spending any time in the Safari Zone. I don't have like a Pokemon that I need to catch or anything. So that will do it for today's episode. Get ready for a very short video tomorrow when we take on Jasmine. For now, though, have a great rest of your day, and until next time. Deuces!